So I'd like to talk about the retail face of sustainable food, the marketing of sustainability, and a great greenwash that is heading our way. I got a call uh, from, uh, from an editor, and she said, Fred, would you like to do a story about the sustainability index? And I said, what is the sustainability index? And she said uh, that there was a consortium out of California and, and Arizona called the Stewardship Index for Specialty Crops. I said, what's a specialty crop? And, well, a specialty crop is not a commodity crop. It's not corn, it's not wheat, it's not soy. A specialty crop are these, these huge crops like lettuce or grapes or almonds or tomatoes that uh, come out of California, come out of Arizona, go all across uh, the United States and the world. And there is this consortium made up of the widest variety of people. There are the farmers, the people who farmed uh, and brought out of the earth all of these crops. And there were the food processors. There was Archer Daniels Midland, and there was uh, Syngenta, and there was Bayer AgroScience, and there was Monsanto, and there was PepsiCo, and there was everybody you would imagine. And then there were these large environmental groups. And then there were a whole bunch of academics. And all these people had come together. And I was, this is really interesting. What are they doing? And what they're trying to do is to come up with some sort of a measurement of a unit of sustainability. So in other words, they're going to try and tabulate every single input, every single emission that goes every step of the way, the water, the diesel, the nitrogen fertilizer, because it's all conventional farming. Then they're going to crunch this all and weight it, and they're going to come up with a single number for every single agricultural uh, product all the way from the farm to the fork. So when it finally gets there, you'll know in this one particular number how sustainable it is. I was like, sure, I'll do that story. That sounds fascinating. Absolutely. So I called these people at the Stewardship Index. The first thing I learned is that this had come about, this wild confabulation of all these people, it had come about really after the 2006 E. coli scare. And that what had happened after that is a lot of people in the farm business and the processing business were really upset because they were getting hit by all this outside regulation. All these protocols were coming their way, all these agendas were coming their way, and it was costing them a lot of money. And so they decided, well, instead of people regulating us from outside, we're going to do self-regulation, kind of like the motion picture, you know, arts and sciences, PG. They're going to do it themselves. And this has a very special name in economics. It's called market capture. And what it means, if you're going to be regulated, it turns out that you're the one who spends most of your time and energy and resources focusing on melding and molding that regulation so that actually you're in charge of that regulation. So this is what these guys were up to. And plus there was another thing, which is that Walmart, the largest retailer in the world, had vowed, as we know, to be carbon neutral and to be sustainable going forward. And not only that, but they were going to label every single one of their products with something that we haven't seen yet, a sustainability label. A sustainability label. Okay, so, so I thought, well, this is, very, this is very interesting. But I can't follow the whole thing. What I'll have to do is follow the tomato. And so what I did is I figured I'd follow the tomato all the way from the ground, all the way through processing, until it hits a bottle of ragu on the shelves of Walmart, and I'll be able to find out all this sustainability indexing along the way. Because it turns out the pilot project in the sustainability index is in what's called process, process tomatoes. There's already a lot of measurement going on. People are trying to figure out this index. So the first stop was the, uh, a farm in Yolo County, California, where Frank Muller is making, in conventional methods, processed tomatoes. And this guy is driving around in his pickup truck, and he's got his iPhone, and he's checking out his evapotranspiration rates all the time, and he's checking every single input and emission and every pesticide and every herbicide and every nitrogen fertilizer, the whole thing that goes into his crops. And I go to his office, and there are these huge, big, fat, black notebooks. And I'm looking through these notebooks, and every single input is accounted for. I'm, I'm flabbergasted by this. And I say to him, Frank, what do you think is the most important of all these metrics that you're looking at? And he said to me, Fred, most important metric? 
is how well your farm is doing economically. So I said, well, that's interesting. Clearly, that's an important metric. I was a little surprised to hear him say that, but it, clearly, that's an important metric. So then I went the next step of the way, and, and the next step of the way, Frank Muller sells 60,000 tons of processed tomatoes every year to the transnational food processor uh, Unilever. And Unilever, as we know, makes uh, Nor Soup, and they also do Slim Fast, and they also do Ragu tomato sauce. And all of his 60,000 tons go to Unilever, and Unilever is famous for their sustainability accounting practices. There's a very famous project they did in 1997 on peas. And I spoke to the project manager for their pea project, and he told me there's a big problem, Fred, which is that when we did peas, what we did is we, we were counting too many things. It was hard to do because there are so many things we have to account for when it comes to sustainability, and we had to count them all and weight them all. We couldn't do it. We screwed up on peas. So now that we're doing tomatoes, we're only going to do a couple of things. We're only counting a couple of things, and they're called KPIs. They're called Key Performance Indicators, okay? And I'm looking at their KPIs, and I'm looking at their tomato spreadsheet program, and the whole thing, and it's kind of like, what are they looking at? Well, they're checking out their, you know, the, the energy used to, you know, evaporate the water out of the tomatoes, because they've got to evaporate the water out of the tomatoes so that they can then send them by rail all the way across the country to Owensboro, Kentucky, where they can then add more water in that they took out, so that then from Kentucky, they can then send it up north and then distribute it to all the Walmarts as ragu. So it's a very complicated process, and along the way, they are figuring out every single KPI, every diesel, gallon, every little spill, every... And I realized, once again, actually, these guys are not measuring sustainability. They're measuring money. So I, I, you know, I didn't say anything. I went over to Walmart when I was done with them, and I, I went and I bought myself a bottle of Ragu, a dollar at 19 cents. So I guess if you are accounting for money in this kind of obsessive way, that's, that's what you get to get a really inexpensive, affordable product. And I, and I did that, and I, look, I looked, at, looked at that label, and I could not find anything about sustainability. Walmart had said they were going to come out with a sustainability label. There was none. There was no little green dot. There is nothing that said, you know, this, meant this many pesticides went in, this much diesel went in. Nada. So I went home, and uh, I made myself some spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, you know, our generation has fallen in love with the meta, with the virtual, with the hyper, with the derivative product, with the indexical. But you know what? When we're talking about food as an index, we're no longer talking about food. So I realized I had made a big mistake. Instead of following the tomato, I should have been following the index. So I bought a ticket to Arkansas, and I went out to the University of Arkansas, to the Sam M. Walton College of Business, that's right, to the Applied Sustainability Center, and I met John Johnson, who's the executive director of the Applied Sustainability Center, and this guy looks like he hasn't slept for weeks. I mean, he's got a huge problem, you know, he's like, what am I going to do with all this data, and how am I going to do this, and I got to do this interface for the retail, and this, and that, and the other thing, and John, John, and I'm talking to him, and after a while I realize he's telling me, they have not one, they have 350 distinct sustainability indices vying for which one is going to be the retail interface. 350, no wonder the guy gets no sleep, right? There are three, and, and not only that, another source who shall remain nameless tells me, Fred, you know what they talk about in those high-level meetings? They can't agree on what the unit is. They can't figure out how can I weight the can as opposed to the water usage, as opposed to the diesel, as opposed to the electricity, they, have, they don't, they can't figure it out. It's a really hard thing to do, right? It's an extremely difficult question, this measurement of everything, this trying to find a sustainability unit. But I did find one thing out. The nature of this retail interface that Walmart is considering so that everybody immediately, even though they don't, they don't know what sustainability is, they'll know it when they see it, I guess. And what they're thinking of is not an ingredient label, but a speedometer. It's the sustainability speedometer. Right? This is, of course, an artist's rendering of it, but on every single product, remember Walmart has 125,000 retail products. We're talking about the toilet paper and the detergent and the ragu sauce. There will be this sustainability label. 
right? And of course, once again, we don't really know what sustainability is. We don't know how to measure it. Maybe it's more money than anything else. We're not sure, but this speedometer will make it really easy for everybody to make the decision when they buy and feel really good about what it is when they buy it because clearly it's sustainable. <laughs> And I think that, that that's the most important. The thing that we can do here is laugh. I think it's very important to laugh. I think it's very important to laugh out loud and to speak about how absolutely ridiculous uh, such a thing is. I'll leave you with one thought. Through my time in tomato land and in sustainability land, I, I really thought a lot about this whole idea of this measure of everything, the measure of the unit of sustainability. And I thought, what an amazing thing, right? What an incredible idea that we could somehow put everything together and take this incredible complexity and actually conceivably figure out what everything costs in sustainability currency, right? And I thought to myself, you know, if we could do such a thing, this would be the most incredible intellectual, social, environmental, and scientific achievement not only of our generation, but for the next. And we can't sell it short. Thank you.